God's Wisdom for a Fair and Just World by Dr. Jim Richards. Chapter 23. The Justice of God or the Justice of Man. It is amazing that as our world has become more humanistic, politically correct, and fair, it has grown more violent, immoral, and out of control. Man's codes of social justice have never produced a fairer, more merciful word. However, those driving the insanity have no regard for facts and statistics. They are driven by ideology, not results. As the elitist ideology becomes a more tangible reality, we see no justice, reprisals, or compensation provided for those who are victims of injustice. Yet crimes against the political elite call for the more severe punishment. Simply question the movement and you could face a loss of income, public humiliation, physical attack, or death. Innocent people lose their jobs, homes are destroyed, and neighborhoods burn to the ground. Anyone who raises their voices for the innocent is vilified as a racist or hater. Evil is called good and good is called evil. We saw it in the pandemic. We saw it in the pandemic. Murderers, rapists, thieves, and violent criminals were released from prison to protect them from COVID-19. Yet swift and extreme punishment was enacted upon those who didn't observe the six-foot rule, went to church, or attempted to protect their family or property. In the New World Order, the strictest punishments will be for those who, in word, thought, or deed, challenge or even question the elitist ideology. The goal of the woke socialist justice system serves little to help those who value law and order, hold jobs, and pay taxes. The primary function of their justice system is domination. The biblical concept of justice is rooted in the Hebrew word for judgment. Judgment is a fair, equitable verdict. It should favor or disfavor no one. It should be impartial. Deuteronomy 16, 19, and 20 says, quote, You shall not pervert justice. You shall not show partiality, nor take a bribe. For a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. You shall follow what is altogether just, that you may live and inherit the land which the Lord your God is giving you. End quote. Verse 19 provides obvious instructions for justice. But verse 20 dispels the idea that justice is about earning from God. Justice is for our benefit. It makes our country safe and secure. Many times when explaining scriptures about justice and loving treatment of our fellow man, God says that justice is what makes a nation healthy and stable. A fair and just system assures that you will remain in your country. When a nation's judicial system is corrupt and unfair, there are internal and external threats. Remember, great nations are seldom destroyed from the outside. They are usually destroyed internally by discontented troublemakers. When good people cannot find justice, they become angry. After all, the first responsibility of government is to protect its citizens. To protect the innocent and the weak. Love is the expression of value for others. Criminals have no value for others. When the government refuses to protect the innocent, they prove they do not care about the well-being of the innocent, thereby making themselves conspirators with the criminals. It signals their true intentions as well as their lack of character and ethics. Prevent future crimes. Repeat offenders repeat their offenses because they can. 
The consequences of their crime were not enough to detour them. The socialists insist that we must put more effort into education. While I agree, I also believe the first lesson they must learn is that crime does not pay. Reducing sentencing for good behavior, plea deals, and other approaches towards rehabilitation are not designed to help the criminal. They don't help the victim, and based on recidivism, they don't prevent crime. They do, however, benefit the ineffective court and prison systems. Instruct the perpetrator. The Bible concept of a fool is one who will not learn by instruction. If a person does not learn by instruction and warning, the only hope they have of ever leaving a life of crime is consequences. Proverbs 17.10 and Proverbs 19.29 Instruct the observer. Consequences for the criminal discourage the young and foolish from following in their ways. One of the most absurd practices of our judicial system is the treatment of young offenders. Young offenders know they will pay minimal consequences for severe crimes. They also know their records will be sealed, providing for a cover for their expansion into adult crime. Our system makes them believe that they will never face the consequences. Provide restitution for the wrong. As you will see in the next chapter, the biblical model for justice includes restitution to the victim. Our court system is no longer about justice for the victim. It is about justice for the state. In socialism, people are not tried for crimes against humanity. They are tried for crimes against the state. A murderer doesn't have to answer to the family of the victim. They answer to the state. That's why the state can let a murderer walk on a plea deal, release them from prison, or choose to not try them when it might be a difficult case. Nothing about the current system is about justice for citizens. If someone wrongs you or your family, the state doesn't make them pay restitution. You have to file a civil case. Perpetrators occasionally pay court costs. The offended party loses money and time, which cannot be recovered. The cost to the perpetrator is so minimal, they are seldom discouraged from a life of crime. On the rare occasion when the perpetrator is ordered to pay some type of restitution, all the court fees must first be satisfied. It could be years before the victim recovers a single dollar. Then in many states, a probation officer can decide to write off the debt with no consideration or notification to the victim. Every word of God has a goal to teach us how to walk in love towards one another. The New Testament word for love, agape, means to have value, to hold in high regard, to consider precious. God's commandments tell us how to express value for one another. Love seeks to give, serve, and to bring benefit to others. It isn't a call to codependence. Codependents sacrifice in order to be valued. Their ultimate goal is to meet their own needs, not the means of other. God's love looks to meet the needs of others in a way that is not crippling, humiliating, or enabling. Selfishness is when we do things with no regard for the value, love, of others. Those who practice this are willing to hurt others emotionally, financially, and physically for personal benefit. The law and the commandments identify selfishness, anti-love behavior. Biblical justice provides prevention, protection, and restitution to prevent crime and protect the innocent. According to Anton LaVey, founder of the American Satanist Church. The purest form of Satanism is not bowing down to Satan, it is selfishness. 
Selfish people hurt others. They do not walk in God's love. It is the epitome of evil. Every aspect of the modern judicial system is based on anti-biblical principles. It encourages selfishness, i.e. Satanism. One of the most discouraging factors in this corrupt system is when I see misdirected Christians and pastors fighting against God's wisdom for justice. They think they are benefiting society, but they are only making matters worse for everyone except the criminal.